Hi, my name is Yaroslav Mahuchik. I'm world record holder and Olympic champion, and you're welcome to Atlet Monde. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Atlet Monde podcast. My name is Mathilde, and in this podcast, I interview track and field athletes from all around the world. My guest this week is Yaroslava Mahuchik, the world record holder in the women's high jump with 210. Yaroslava is an Olympic, a world, and a European gold medalist, and she's only 23. She was even 22 when we recorded this interview in Brussels the day before she won her third Diamond League final. In this episode, Yaroslava and I talked about the new world record she set in Paris in July, erasing Stefka Kostadinova's mark that had stood since 1987. Yaroslava also told me how proud she is to represent Ukraine on the world stage. We talked about her first years during track and field and about her win at the 2017 Under-18 World Championships in Nairobi, a key moment in her career. You're listening to the original interview in English, but the interview is also available dubbed in French for those of you who understand French better than English. Here is my conversation with Yaroslava Mahuchik. Hi, Yaroslava. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Last time we spoke, that was at the Paris Diamond League in the mix zone, minutes after your world record. Yes. I think that at that time, I didn't believe that I jumped <laughs> to a 10. But now I recognize this thing. And I recognize that I'm world record holder and now Olympic champion of Paris. So I'm so happy. This was in France. A few weeks later, you won Olympic gold in France as well. This mm. is a French podcast. I think yes. France is special to you now. Yes, of course, France is special for me. When I came to Paris and one Ukrainian publisher in Instagram write that I have a good looking in Paris. So the Paris, it's really good for Yaroslav Mohuchik and I jumped world record at the time and after this Olympic medal and of course it will be special place for me because I jumped first time world record first my Olympic gold medal and truly Paris is special because it was another Olympic Games for me it was different Olympic Games from Tokyo because in Tokyo was COVID time yeah. and but in Paris was a lot of people in qualification we have qualification at 10 o'clock a.m. But the stadium was full. A lot of spectators come to support and I was so, wow. And I just enjoyed the atmosphere. France is special for you, but I think you also gave us a lot of emotions. <laughs> you know, the people attending the Diamond League probably did not expect a world record. I mean, we knew you were yes. capable of it, but to do it that day, it was a lot of emotions and then Olympic, Olympic gold. So also, yeah. thank you for the emotions you gave us. We're also very grateful. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it's my work. <laughs> but, you know, before this world record, of course, I had a long way. And I knew that one day I will jump this because I'm in Puma family, whereas we have a lot of world record holders, really. And Mondo Duplantis, for example, he breaks the record uh, almost every competition. <laughs> it's impressive, really. But it shows me that it's possible to one time to break your record and after that break your record, yeah. really. And at that day, 7 July, I remember my feelings inside before competition. I was mentally ready and I have feeling inside that, yes, today I can jump this record. It was in my mind. Okay. But of course, when I came to the stadium and did some mistakes uh, at the heights, like 195, 201, 203, I thought, what record? And you jump with second and 10th, <laughs> 195, with second and 10th, 201. And it was like 201 with second and 10th, 203 with second and 10th. After that, I tried 207 and first attempt failed and I was Oh my gosh, really? And finally, I jumped to a 10 with first attempt. <laughs> and it was, yes, we did it. After that, my body <laughs> decided to recover, relax. Mm -hmm. I didn't do some work workouts like I should do to do before Olympic Games. Uh, I just run in warm ups, uh, stretching, and that's all. One week I recovered and uh, finally I got to Paris. 
Thank God that I jumped from this first attempt, all this first attempt, and it gives me a gold medal. Right. But you're talking about Mondo, one centimeter in the pole vault is maybe easier. I one extra know. centimeter. In the, in the high jump, one centimeter is a lot. Yes, in high jump, every centimeter is a lot. And when I have my personal best uh, inside two or six, a lot of people said, it's just four centimeters for the records. And like, if you watch the measure, four centimeters, yes, it's so small. But when you <laughs> when you see the bar yeah. and you see this difference between these heights and you say, mm, yeah, it's so big. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I was so happy to jump that because for my country it was really important at these days to show that we are strong. Yeah, talking about your country, we are in Belgium right now. I know you spend a lot of time in Belgium. Yes, uh, I had preparation for the indoor Europeans in Istanbul last year, and now. We were here for training because there's good facilities outside track, inside track. So we were here, train here for my season. And now I'm looking forward to the end of my season, really, because I feel that I'm exhausted. But I want to do all my best, really, to show the good results like, and finish this season, really, on a good note, because it's important for me. Are you exhausted physically or mentally or both? I think both and physically. Mentally, I was exhausted after Olympic Games, but I knew that I have three more competition and I have the final of Diamond League and I want to get it my short trophy. And I think it's motivated me and pushed me mm -hmm. <laughs> to continue working and to not go to vacation just working, focus at high jump, training, and come and show the results. What is next after Brussels? Vacation! <laughs> Where? Uh, to Turkey. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm relaxed for one week. And after that, I'm going to home, to my hometown, to Ukraine for two months. And you know, after season, I don't know now what I'm looking forward more. Vacation or traveling to home? <laughs> Really, because some point I know that I need this relax, relaxation, vacation, like to change your mind a little bit. But in another point, I thought, oh, maybe <laughs> just directly to hometown, really. But I think that vacation and after this home. How is it home for you now? How is the situation? Uh, you know, the last months, it's really worst situation because every day the Russians attack Ukraine and before Zurich it was a rocket attack in Lviv and in Poltava a lot of people was injured and of course it's terrible but it's my home I miss them I miss my family my friends atmosphere at home so I want to go and to, to be with them to talk in real life yeah. because some way of course we have phones but in real life conversation it's different really yeah. feel different and you can hug them and yes i can hug them i remember when last year i came back to my hometown and i remember how my father met me and it was incredible feelings inside because before the war have started I remember, of course, I went to some training camps, but for two months and after this came back to Ukraine. But I always have the date when I come back. Yeah. But now when I left Ukraine, I don't know when I came really again, yeah. <laughs> because it's my season. It's so, so difficult. And for my city, if you talk about my hometown, it's a long way from board. It's not possible to do it in the middle of the season. Okay. And is it possible to train? Yes, it's possible. But of course, when the air signals for the rocket dangerous, so we should go to safety place. And it's so we have a lot of rocket uh, alarm, unfortunately. But I hope that it will be finished soon. <laughs> I stay in positive note because uh, I think that. Uh, especially Ukrainians should believe in our winnings and do everything that possible to like to be closer to our big winning. I think people like me who were born in France or here in Belgium, we just take peace for granted. We just think it's normal. 
you know, I, I was born in the 80s. I've never had a war in my country. Yes. You know, I remember the time when uh, well, I had in school, of course, subjects like history, Ukrainian history and the world history. And when we read articles about the Second World War and it was, oh my gosh, it's not possible. And we thought that it will never happen with us. Really bad. February of 2022 showed that it happened with us. Yeah. You were in Ukraine when it started, right? Yes. I was at home because uh, it was winter. We have the inside track in my hometown. So we decided to be at home for preparation. And I remember this morning I woke up at four, approximately five. I heard explosions. When I heard first explosion, I thought maybe is something happened, like, okay. But when I heard second explosions and after that I heard like rockets through, I understood that the war have started. And of course, in hysterical, I called to my parents because they live to a different side of my hometown. Okay. And they didn't know that the war have started. I talked to them. I talked to my father. Father, the war have started, and he was like, "What? The war? What are you talking about?" They didn't hear the explosions yet. Not as it. Yes, I heard. I saw the war have started, and oh my gosh! Because in Ukraine, you you know, conversation about the war was, I think, two months before okay. the war have started. But everyone thinks that it's not happened. It's unbelievable things that another country invaded to our country. It was no, 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 no. But when it happens and all people were shocked, were shocked about that. And I called to my coach, to parents, and we go to, went to the countryside, really. And we were there, some do, did some volunteers, some helpness. And of course, after that, we made a decision about world championship because it was difficult decision for me to left my country because I thought that I can do more in my hometown, that volunteer work, something helps. But at that point, my coach support me and my family said that you should go because it's the most important competition for you and it's a chance to talk about uh, the war that happens with journalists. And we went, it was a long way, three days by car. But when we came, I think it's one of the, maybe one competition where I thought that I should win the gold medal. Because usually I think that I just want to show the good results, just enjoy the atmosphere. But at that time, I think that, no, I should win the gold medal because of course, the journalist talks with all medalists, but the gold medal, they appreciate more. So I should win. Yeah. And I won it. And I have started talking about the war in Ukraine. And I remember some athletes showed their support, like Gianmarco Tamberi. Yeah, Gianmarco Tamberi was with name so far, boys. And Eleonora Patterson, yeah. she has uh, nails in colors of my flag. And it was really important. And a lot of athletes just came and say something, talk to me. And I really appreciate it. So it's extra motivation for you to win of course, you want to win the medals, but it also gives you a platform to talk to yes, media. Yes, it gave me a platform to talk with media. But I remember when I talked with media, I thought that one week and I came back home. Mm. I thought that it finished one week, two weeks, maybe it's maximum. But now it's more than two years. We are fighting for our independence and for liberty. But I still have the hope that it finish as soon as possible because we work at it and every Ukrainian works in their field, really. I work in field, I protect my country at field and show how strong and another people in fashion, in some industry and we do all our best to continue like that people remember that the war in Ukraine is not over. And I saw you gave, you gave some of your prize money to yes. the armed forces, also to um, animal, animal shelter. shelter. I love that. Yes, I gave, of course, to, I received the money from government. And first thing, it was my thought that 
of course, I will send this money to our army and I send it and uh, in one million hryvni is approximately 24,000 of dollars I send to animal shelters and the shelters that help animals uh, evacuated from the occupation territory or where the wise continues a lot of bonds because I knew that it's important and I have a cat from a shelter and I know that the animal cannot help their cells yeah. and they because I remember the situation when the people left their cats but dogs were uh, in the city with a lot of rocket attacks, bomb, and they moved and the animal shelters started this uh, the operation to help the animals. And I think it's great and we should talk about that. Yeah. Now, of course, we have charity more like for our army because it's the most important, really. Charity and animals, it's not so on high level. Of course, but we work on it. We have uh, your animals that helps to find some shelters, more shelters that uh, it's real shelters, not like fake. Mm -hmm. And we find them and after that they build a lot of um, space for the dogs that for the winter time. Right. And I was so impressed and I'm so happy that my money helped animals. Yes, because winter is tough in Ukraine. Yes, it's yeah. so cold. <laughs> And when we talked in Paris at the Diamond League, you said the situation in Ukraine also made you stronger mentally. Yeah. Can you explain? Yeah, you know, before my life was full in competition, in this track and field atmosphere. And I think that situations that happened in Ukraine showed me that we have life outside of track and field. And if you're bad jumping, it's okay, you should work, but the life is the most valuable thing that we have, really. And it gives me more, like mentally, I was ready for different situation that happens outside and happens in track and field. Okay. In an interview you gave before breaking the world record, you said you were already thinking about the world record, yes. but you thought you had to, what you said was, I have to grow up mentally. Yes. Did you do something in particular? Uh, I have my coach. Okay. <laughs> she has a really good, mentally strong and she reads a lot of books like psychology. But I was, I think when I will grow up, I was strong really mentally. But I thought that in my mentally should be like um, confident that I can do it really that it should be in my mind that one day I will jump this it's like it's work like visualization but you visualize this and work work and again work for that and so we had some conversation with my coach about that and after that we changed twice of this year we changed my runway twice yes in the winter time we changed a little bit because uh, I had before like jumping two steps start of my runway, but we changed it. I have started running, just running, okay. and it helps me to start my season great with two or four yeah. in the winter. Yes, in outside time we decided to add two steps more for my runway because I add speed and I get faster than I was, but it was strange for me because first training was good really and I was oh my gosh really it works another three or four trainings it was bad and I thought why are we doing this but after that I understand no it helps me it helped me maybe next my mind should be calm should be do this work it takes time because long time like five years you jump with your runway and after that you should change your mind a little bit but it works i jumped world record obviously <laughs> <laughs> so it works and is it automatic now or do you still need to practice it in order for it? Uh, i think uh, i need more practice when I have more experience, I think it will be better automatically. But for me, it's difficult to focus only at competition when in my country go on the why. And sometimes when some, like a bit uh, rocket attack to city where the buildings is destroyed, after that, 
I'm thinking a lot about this. And when I go to stadium, for me, it's difficult that say to me that I should focus on the high jump. Now I have competition. So you should forget everything. Just remember that you should do. Yeah. Like we said earlier, you won Olympic gold in Paris. That was the only gold medal that was missing. Yes. <laughs> Which isn't just crazy because you are 22. <laughs> This is crazy. Young generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're so young. You've done everything already. Uh, yes. Is, do you, is it only good? Is it? What's your motivation now? Because you won everything. You've got the world record. Yes, but I want to improve myself now, really. And uh, I want to have a big collection of the medals, really. I want to break more record, my break my record again. It's my motivation because I think that the sky is limit, so everything is possible. And of course, I want to be twice Olympic champion, so I'm looking forward for that, really, because I like what I do, and it's because why I continue to do because I enjoy the atmosphere of competition. I'm exciting, really, and. You know, one day I thought about before competition, I'm excited, but the people just have work. They're going to work, come back with family, with friends they met. They don't have like excitement inside. And why I should do? Maybe I should change. And after that, no, I will miss these emotions that gives me this stadium, that gives me people this because I jump for people really yeah. and they gave me this emotional support for me and no 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 way <laughs> I don't want to jump until 30s it's like I have a plan yeah it's a lot of time for a lot more medals yes when you're just 22 so how do you the two things compare the world record and the Olympic gold was the world record maybe a bigger surprise no I think no no surprise for World Record. My coach said to me that she knew that I was ready before 2024, maybe earlier, but she said that maybe yes, you are, because in mental way it's hard to yeah. focus on high jump, to focus on training. But I think that all problems, all issues that God gives us, that we are some recognizing something or to be stronger, the next year and now the all stars <laughs> is good and I jumped and of course it's important because I signed in world record I signed my name in Ukraine name to the history of world athletics and now before competition when you will look the start list <laughs> it will be every competition world record Yaroslav Mahuchi from Ukraine yeah. so I'm happy that I'm in this list really yeah. But Olympic medal, it's fantastic for me. Gold medal for my country. And I think that for all athletes that they have dreams like world record, Olympic medals, for us to get qualified to Olympic Games, to be at podium and one day win the gold medal. And it's the most beautiful podium when you stay there, you take it, your gold medal, you saw your flag, you you seen in your game, gym of country, and you're so proud that you did it. And you shared the podium with another Ukrainian. Yes, Ukrainian. you know, it's funny story because two Australians, yeah. two Ukrainians, and, you know, we like, we competing together and all know that some way we change our places, some way we want Australian girls, some Ukrainian girls and there's two Australians, two Ukrainians. Yeah. It, it was so funny, really. And I was so happy for Irina because she long time. She has her first place and uh, previous Olympic Games. So she, she was uh, first and now she's third. And of course, it's a big uh, proud that Ukrainian strong and we had uh, three medals in track and field yeah. because uh, Mihailo Kohan from Hammerstraw won the bronze too. So, so I'm so happy. Was it extra pressure for you coming into the Olympics as a new world record holder? I think no. I didn't feel pressure. I know that a lot of people write me that she will win definitely. No way. If And I knew that if I lost this game, it will be a failure of my life. Not my life, but in sport career, yeah. like failure. 
but at the world record i was so confident and i knew that we did a lot of work and now i'm in good shape really it showed the world records it showed and i just and my coach was confident and my team all believed in me and i didn't read some commentary or some insights because i believe in myself i was in really confident in myself that i can do it i will win the gold medal for my country going back to the world record did it feel any different during the attempt did it just feel like any good jump uh, or... i just felt that i'm fly so high <laughs> yeah so you, you felt something different yes i felt something different i felt this in 207 when i jumped for second attempt that wow it's so high uh, just i can fly so high really and when i jump to 10 i fly so high i feel it that i did it wow it's fantastic and in this way i recognize that i want to do this again <laughs> one day because it's real fantastic feelings have you watched the jump a lot of times yes <laughs> And what do you think when you see it? Do you see the things that you could still improve? Yes, of course. I try to find cool competition to watch my missing attempts from 195 or 201, 203. And when I watched this, I thought, how? How I did it? I don't know, really. And when I watched that 210, of course, I have some measures that Yes, I can work more on it because uh, it was not clear uh, when I jumped bar, or, uh, but it was so close and I need, yes, I will work on this takeoff and that will be everything good. It's good to know what to work on. Yes. Like, you know, you always have room for improvement. Yeah. Even you have a lot of achievements, a lot of medals. Am I right to say that when you first started, you hated the Fosbury flop? Uh, yes. And you like the scissors more? <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Well, a long time ago. You're still very young. But yeah, yeah, when I was a child. And I hated it because I couldn't jump good with Fosbury flop. And I jumped on the scissors. And I remember the state competition when I failed two attempts. It was the H145. And my first coach said to me, you should try Fosbury flop, jump, please, sort of time with Fosbury flop. And I was, no way, no, no. But when I stay in my lineup and I was, okay, I will jump Fosbury flop. And I jumped it. It was a good attempt. And I said, mm, maybe I should try more jumping Fosbury flop. Fosbury club is the best technique, but you know that if we watch the competition of men's and women's, every person jumps differently, really. Every athlete has their different runway, different technique in the fly. It's impressive. When you were 15, and I said 15. Yes, 15. <laughs> you won the under 18 World Championships in Kenya. Yes. And I think it was a turning point in your career. For me, it was important competition because uh, I was in the scales, continue track and field uh, or stop it because uh, it was uh, like one of the last uh, years in the school. After that, you should choose the university. And this point showed me that mm, I should continue my work and at this point I have started thought about the Olympic Games that I should start my preparation for Tokyo and it was a good experience because it was a crowd it was a big stadium full stadium and they all loud because uh, the Kenyans runners at the same time and it was <laughs> when I jumped and I jumped with this atmosphere and I knew that, wow, it's cool because when I was a child, I want to be a singer one year, <laughs> only one year. And I remember that I wanted to collect all stadiums of uh, people thinking, but now I collect all stadiums with jumping. <laughs> some, you know, it's like it dreams in some way it's come true. <laughs> You're doing it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In your own way. It's often said that there is a, 
an important moment in the career of a high jumper. It's the first time you're able to jump your height. You know, yeah. kids, when they get started, yeah. if, when they're able to, to jump their height, it's <laughs> like, oh, I'm a high jumper. Do you remember the first time you, you jumped your height? Uh, I don't know. I remember that it was step by step. But I remember when the first time I jumped two meters. Yeah. It was in 2019 in Oregon, a diamond lead. And I jumped this two meters. And it was, wow, real fantastic. And uh, I was the youngest uh, girl who jumped two meters at this way. And I was, oh my gosh, really, it's so cool. I want to fly more, <laughs> fly higher. And it gives me more motivation, really, to work. And in the end of the season in Doha, I jumped to four, and it was world record uh, under 20. And I was, yes, my first world record. <laughs> I was so young, and not a lot of people knew me that I was like, came the girls and came with competing with the women who compete before at the world championship but now they knew that mm, yeah she can jump high yeah i think everybody knows now yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have you ever broken your pb or jumped really high and then stopped the competition and then later on thought mm, i should have tried a high uh, bar because uh, I, yes, I was in really good yes, shape. Yes, of course, we stopped when I was younger. We stopped competition. And like I said, when I first jumped two meters, uh, I didn't jump more attempts. And I think that it's right decision because with my coach, we did like step by step to be strong, to be healthy. Because I was so young and I need more strong, more power to get to the highest. And uh, I think it's good. No. I don't think that maybe at this competition I could try higher the results and the results will be higher. No. Okay. And only now I grow up, I'm strong, and now I can continue. Like when I jumped 2 or 3, I jumped 2 or 3, 2 or 7, and I decided to continue. Yes, of course, we continue. Well, let's try. Yeah. Tell me about your coach. So Tatiana? Yes, okay. Tatiana. When yes. did you start working together? And she's the one who told you to do the high jump, right? Uh, yeah, we decided together to okay. do a high jump. Oh, we have started when I was 11 and it was 2012. She came to the school where I did my training. And so first of all, they worked together with my first coach. It was two coaches okay. and they worked together. After this, they have disagreement uh, with my coach and I decided to stay with Tatiana because I like the energy of this coach. And first of all, we did, I think, everything. But I thought that I will be running <laughs> hurdles because okay. I like it. And my coach, previously, she had boys, men who run 110 with hurdles. Okay. So... Yes, maybe. But one day when we have started to walk with high jump and we recognize that it's good for me and I like it to do. I like jumps. It's really important to ask the person you want to do because of course it can be good, but I don't like and what's the point of this to yeah. do. And of course, my coach has started to read a lot of books about high jump more because of course in the university you learn every event like but after that you work like people come to you and what the best point for them and they work on this point and she has started to read a lot of books and to analyze analyze the jumps she's my second mom and my mom always said that i believe you her she's your mom too <laughs> so it's okay because most of time we spend together training camps to training after they come back home together. So it's my friend. It's a great when you have the good contact with your coach. Only that point you can achieve the result. Yeah. Do you need like eye contact with her before? Yes, you jump? before jump, before every jump, I did it. <laughs> I saw my coach. I watched her eyes, and and you know I have more power that. I can do it. Yes, coach, believe in me. I believe in myself. So let's do it. So eye contact is enough. She doesn't even need to 
Did you say anything? Uh, no, b no. Before jumps, eye contact is okay. okay. But after jumps, okay, we have small conversation. What I should do? Uh, of course, uh, I grow up and now I'm professional athlete. That some way I know, know what I should do. Yeah. I remember my one of first competition without Hoi. It was COVID time in Monaco, Diamond League, and I remember that I did it. And I imagine that <laughs> she stayed here, and after that, I jumped. Okay, you just. Pretended she was there? Yes. Okay. Yes, I just pretended, I remember, because I needed. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Am I right to say your parents never watched you compete? Uh, no, my father twice came to the Ukrainian championship. Okay. My mom was in the Budapest, but my mom was so excited. <laughs> And, you know, when I didn't jump to 194 with first attempt, she stand and go out. <laughs> And walking, and my sister after that <laughs> went out too to find her and said that I'm jump, it's all okay. And after that, mom, please, <laughs> if you're so excited, and she decided, yes, I will watch this by TV. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, but I hope one day she can came to watch the competition in real life because my father wanted to do, but previous competition here. I think at like age that uh, have agreement that he can go outside of Ukraine, but now we, it's okay and he can go outside of Ukraine. So I hope that one day <laughs> he will come and to the Diamond League. So let's see. And you like getting the support from the crowd, like people clapping for you? Uh, yes. Before, I think for me, it was like clapping. Yes, it's okay. For, but now... I recognize that, and for people, it's cool when they clap in, like, they're part of this competition. And for me, I understand, yes, they're part of me, really, because I jump for them, and some point, before the jumps, in my way, I wanted that they clap, and I imagine in my, I wanted that they clap and loud that I jump. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic feelings. Do you like watching other events in track and field? Yes, I watch a lot of track and runs, 400 meters, pole vault, long jump, triple jump. So it's interesting. I think that you should be involved in every event, really to watch and following them. But of course, sometimes when I have high jump, for example, it's not Diamond League, but World Championship or European, you have always in the last day <laughs> competition and you cannot go to stadium because you get a lot of emotions yeah. for that and after that you will go oh my gosh why i did it but when you have competition it's first day it's really you can go and watch yeah talking about uh, diamond league and then major competitions do you think it's easier to break a world record at the diamond league meet than at the olympic in the olympic final for example i don't know <laughs> for me yes i broke the world record in the diamond league And like said before to my Ukrainian that I didn't break the Olympic records in Olympic. And I said that Tokyo was like for me, Tokyo was training mm. <laughs> like for medal. Uh, now Paris, I own the gold medal. It's training for, for the break the Olympic records. Maybe it's some kind of diamond league. It's not so pressure and you don't feel like this responsibility that you should jump definitely good 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 because yeah. you jump for your country mm. so maybe in this way but you know if we watch mondo so yeah but mondo is special <laughs> yeah mondo is phenomenal i think because he's have start he has started to do pole was since three years old yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy <laughs> but you know it's interesting you said in uh, Diamond League you're not jumping for your country but I think maybe other athletes are not competing for that country I feel like you're always competing for your country yeah I always compete for my country and I want to give them a joy moment right, that they will be happy if I win the gold medal and I'm so proud to represent my country in different places and to be the best in the world Are you even more proud to be Ukrainian now of than course. before the war? Of course, I'm proud more because Ukrainians are strong and they, you know, I remember the first days of the war and 
after all Ukrainians were supportive for each other and now they continue to be that they're strong, they not give up. And of course, I'm so proud of my nation. There is one question I ask all of my guests. I told you before we started recording, the podcast is called Athlete Mondial. It means athletes of the world. Because yes. what I love the most about track and field is that anybody can do track and field. The entire yeah. world can do track and yes. field. Yes. What do you love the most about track and field? Track and field is the queen of sport. <laughs> I like the atmosphere, the personality of uh, athletes, of our athletes, because we all team really like when we watch a lot of conversations they come a different track and fill the events in one hotel and you have a change in experience so it's really fantastic yeah thank you very much for your time duże dziękuję duże dziękuję wow well, i had to thank you i had so to study much. i don't speak ukrainian but duże dziękuję that's yes what I I'm so really impressed when I heard from people that they know a lot of languages because for me I know Ukrainian language and English and for me I want to improve my English to the fluent or a good level. I have started to learn French. I wanted to know before Olympics but when I understand that when I have lessons uh, in English and I have started talk by by French and said Now, maybe when I grow up, uh, I'm 25, I try again, but now, no, I should focus on it English. <laughs> you know, it takes time because I had a problem with, I started with Spanish and then Italian, mm -hmm. and then I, I ended up speaking uh, like a mix of both. But with practice, now I speak yeah. Spanish and I speak Italian. Well, it's so cool. It, it takes time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it all takes time. Yeah, the high job, everything. Experience, yes. Yeah, I think athletes know you can't just get what you want like this. Yes. It, it takes time. So, yeah, of course. Do you want to add anything? No. Any final words for people listening? No. Continue following. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. If you liked the episode, please do me a favor and leave a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You might also want to check the other episodes I have available for you in English. My guests include other current or former world record holders like Mondo Duplanis, Ashton Eden, or David Rudisha. If you'd like to support the podcast, please check the link in the description. I'll be back soon with another episode. Bye-bye.